Welcome back to Talking Transitions. Today's guest is Liam Miller. Liam's uh, documenting his journey trying to become a professional footballer. Liam, give us a little bit of background on you. So I grew up in Australia, um, moved over here when I was about 14, been playing football ever since I could walk, really. Um, started pursuing seriously football um, and taking my journey seriously when I was around 12 to 14, that age. Um, and then signed my first kind of deal two-year scholar at Cardiff City uh, when I was 16. Uh, so that was in like the COVID period and then left six to eight months into that. Um, moved to Bournemouth, signed there on a non-contract, made my professional debut um, and then just still on the journey to kind of signing that pro contract now. You said um, when we spoke that you used to struggle with your weight. Yeah. And that was one of the main reasons why you started documenting your food that you was eating. And um, Talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, so um, I'd say, again, in like the COVID period, 2019, around there, I was slighter on the heavier side, um, needed to lose some weight, especially if I wanted to sign for clubs like Cardiff City or pursue that football career. Um, so from there, went into a calorie deficit to lose weight, um, as you do, started eating healthier um, and cooking healthier meals. That was the outcome of the social media that I've grown now as well. Um, and just started documenting that, taking little photos here and there. Went to lose all that weight, um, like taking transformation pictures as you, you do as well. And then from there, blew up with this whole social media side. So it's it's been a good journey. It's been tough mentally as well, as you guys know, with the whole football side as well. Um, but yeah, it's been great. Talk us about then your, your struggles that you went through mentally. Um, obviously when you're like overweight and you're going to school as well. So at that time I was going to school, I'd be going to go to the gym before school, be going there from like six till seven thirty, and then eight till three would be like school, eight till three, four. Then I'd be going doing like a training session at goals before I'd head off to the training session at night. So it'd be like three sometimes I was just over training at that period. Um, just doing too much training if I if I was. Um and mentally just to keep that up and try not to burn out over the extended period one to two years is 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 very tough and i've found now like the balance um between all those those training sessions um but yeah i would say when i was in school as well like you don't obviously when you're on the heavier side you're not in those friendships yeah. you're not in kind of on the the cooler kids or whatever um i wasn't ever excluded or anything like i was always because i always played football as well like i always had those mates from football teams around like local teams playing and things like that so i had a few mates that go to school with me um but yeah it's always in that the back of your mind like you've you've got that thing that you're not uncomfortable with but it's always there and that kind of always be my chip on my shoulder to keep working harder and Keep trying Where did to that, that. Um, hunger and determination come from as a young lad? Because you said about um, going to the gym before school. Andre, I don't think you would have went to the gym before school. I definitely didn't go to the gym before school. I did school. actually, John. Did you? Oh, I was, I was, forced, I was forced to go to the gym. Hey, boy. Your dad. Did he, yeah. <laughs> Help me. What, your dad used to make you go to the gym before school? He used to do stuff, yeah. No, it was quite, um, quite not not probably on your level. This guy's training when it's pitch black, but yeah. to yeah. be honest with you, yeah, yeah I did. Did do it not not always, and it was never off my own back. I well, I was slacking them when I was yeah. lazy, but it just never even it was never a thing. Especially in my school, it was never a thing that anyone went to the gym before. School. Well, I think the thing which stands out most about Liam is it, it's off his own back. It's not through anybody else pushing him. Mm. It's it's genuinely off your own back, isn't it? Obviously, you've been yeah. inspired by people, but then inspiration only lasts a little while, and it doesn't actually make you commit to it. So that's what's impressive about your journey. Yeah, like I've always had the support of my parents, like as I said, moving across to the entire side of the world um, and then supporting that journey. Um, and I think as well, my dad, like growing up with the football side, um, helping me wherever I needed, whether it was buying boots or whether it was traveling across the world to pursue my dream. Um, he's always been there. And if I wanted to go train, he, he would come out and, and train with me. Um, so I've always had his support there, um, as well as my mom, of course. Um, and I think Seeing my brother's work ethic as well when he was playing um, growing up is another another big factor for me. So, um, yeah, I think as well, I've always had that thing to prove, as I said, and um, I'm still on that. I'm still proving it um, to myself, whether it's 
um with the social media whether it's with the football i'm still just work as hard as hard as ever really you know what you're saying about your parents moving from australia to england to help us through your football and career does that give you any more pressure on your shoulders um yes and no i think um i've seen a glimpse of what i can achieve um obviously making my professional debut i've seen that glimpse like i've seen i can reach the level um been on trial at man united those things like i've seen i can i can get it I've, I've touched it slightly so i think i know i'm capable of it i know i'm able to to sign that pro contract i know i'm able to i think say it, make them proud but i think i've already made yeah, them yeah. proud um uh, with everything i'm doing on a daily basis so it's a pressure yes but i think they'll do whatever we want they've always been there to support us my sister my brother they've literally always been there for us so i think um it's not too much of a pressure they've never pressured me to be able to say like if you don't make it and even with school like it wasn't you have to get good grades it was always like we're here to support yeah. you with whatever you need how did your man united trial come about if you don't mind me asking so it was it was a weird one actually my dad had a contact with um a goalkeeping coach and he was um linked with kind of man united he contacted them I got asked to go for a one week trial there. Um, so this was in 2020, 2021, maybe. Um, and I got asked to go for a, a one week trial in preseason of that, that season with the under 18 slash 23s. We went up to Scotland, did a preseason tour. I had like Garnacho sitting behind me on the bus. Um, and then uh, went up there, played like Charlie McNeil, um, Kobe Mainu, all those kind of players. Um, and I did well the, the first week. It was Monday to Friday training up there with the 18 to 23. So at that time I was still 15 turning 16. Um, on the Friday got stitches. Someone's stud went straight in between my uh, boot into my, my toe. Got stitches in between my toe. Um, played on the Saturday. So the manager was like, oh no, you, could, like, you can't play, can you? I was like, no, I'm, pl I'm playing. Yeah. Like I'm here, I'm playing. So we played against Hearts on the Saturday. Um, did well. They asked me to come back for a second week um, back at Carrington. Played against Tottenham, Chelsea and uh, Wolves. And look, I didn't do the greatest in those games. And I, like, I'm honest about that. Even with the, like when I say it on YouTube and those yeah. kinds of things, I'm honest about it. Um, but yeah, they're looking to sign the top players in the world. After that was followed by me signing with Cardiff City. But yeah, it was a, a good, it was a good, a great experience and great learning curve as well. I've, I've the reason why I asked that I've been in that similar situation, weirdly, I went to United uh, when I was 21 on trial. Um, oh, really? But I went from League 2 at this yeah. point. So I'm in there probably similar to yourself thinking, this is just mad. You know what I mean? Like you, you're around those types of players. The players mm -hmm. I was around at that time was like Anderson and that. Yeah. And mm. you had Yanazai when he was coming through just before he scored them goals. And you're trying to take it all in, but also not kind of freeze under pressure and stuff like that. And, I didn't end up getting signed. I was obviously 21 and you're pushing towards first yeah, team yeah. then, aren't you? So it's either you're good enough to break into our first team, which obviously I went. It was Man United. Uh, a lot of the 21-year-olds were, were on loan in, in the champ at that time. Um, we played Donny, funnily enough, uh, in an in-house game. Yeah. And that's how it got me moved to Barnsley. Um, we played Donny in-house. Brian Flynn was the interim manager. Yeah, yeah. And um, he like basically asked them at the end of the game, who would you take out of that team? And a lot of the players said me. Yeah. Um, but he was like in a situation where he couldn't sign because he was into them. Mm. But Barnsley were watching too. So I ended up going from obviously Berry to Barnsley, which is funny because my manager fucking hated it. Yeah, Kevin Blackwell, he fucking yeah. hated it. He said, Who the fuck's your agent? Yeah. He said, If you can get you there, tell him to get me to Real Madrid. Is that what you're saying, yeah? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, when you're in that situation, as you say, you come from, it doesn't get bigger than that, does it? No, really? no. Yeah. I think it was an interesting one as well. Like, when you've seen that and you're training with them. So like when I was training with the first week, it was kind of just getting up to that, that speed. Cause look, I've never, I was, I went on trial at Plymouth for like three to four weeks. They said I wasn't good enough. Um, and then like, I was still overweight. They said like, I need to lose a bit of weight, get faster. Um, we can't take you on at this time. And then from there, I went to Cardiff for like a one to two game trial that was in COVID. They said, all right, we'll offer you a, a two year scholar after two games. Um, and then I was like, wow, because um, I'm just, just a kid coming yeah. from Australia. Um, the football scene over there is like not great. And then, um, yeah, went, went got, got this thing, 
before I signed my scholar, it was like, do I piss off Cardiff and go on this trial at Man United and then be, may, maybe say like, no, we're not giving you anything anymore. So I was like, I'm taking it. It's yeah. like Man United, I'll, I'll take the chance. Um, but you get up to the, the, the game speed so quickly. And I think that was a learning experience for me is like once I'm in that environment, the full-time environment of training and playing there, you're able to build up that speed and get used to it. And you don't feel as out of place. Yeah. You're playing so, catch up anyway, aren't you? Like, you yeah. Know, you're obviously training a lot yourself. As, as good as it is, it's not nothing like being in that environment. So you're playing catch up. But as you say, once you can get your feet under the table, then you can show your true your true uh, potential, mm. I guess. But what I want to touch on is obviously coming over from Australia, a little bit overweight, because I've always got this picture of everyone in Australia being right into the fitness and health and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm sure there's people who are overweight as well, but it seems like it's a little bit advanced in health fitness compared to like some other places in the world and um, what was it that kind of tipped you over the edge to, to obviously putting on, on on the weight that you did no definitely i think like they've got all the facilities there the ice baths and stuff and I, I, even like back then i was using that like when i was in australia i was using all the ice bath they had the compression gear all that um but i think i just love my food like i still do <laughs> um like my brother was on the opposite side like he was skinnier um i was like on the heavier side and it was it was completely two different things. Um, but I think it was, yeah, I just love my food, just ate too much. Um, playing, like, yeah, I was playing video games as well. Like, I would be um, just there for hours and um, didn't really get out. But until I saw, like, my brother was going back and forth on trials as well um, with different clubs, like Crystal Palace, Blackburn, Rovers, like, all those clubs. Um, and to see him then come back after those trials and the work ethic he was putting in, then kind of made me flip that switch. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm just sitting here playing video games to the point of going nowhere. Like it's just, it's just a waste of my time. I could be spending it on other things. And that's kind of when it flipped my switch as well in my mind of I could be doing other things in business. I could be able to doing other things in football and I could just be better in my life rather than just spending it, wasting it on video games, staring at a screen. Great mindset to have. Oh, and so young. Like great, li- great to learn it so young as well. Mm. Like, that's they, they, some people don't get that to like no. 30 plus, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. the yeah. fact that you're getting that at, at such a young age is obviously the credit to yourself, but it's given you the best opportunity to, to achieve what, you, what you're trying to achieve. Mm. But how did you, you said about your brother going on all those trials then? You used to come over, obviously, a family with limited connections, I guess, in, mm. in football in England. How was he getting all those trials? So, um, there was a school over there. So, we went to a school in Australia and they had a few different connections with like Crystal Palace, West Ham. So like West Ham would come over and like do a camp at the school. Um, so he got recognized there by West Ham actually. So I went over there, um, did trial at West Ham. Then a few of the lads from the school as well, the team that he was in, went over to Crystal Palace. Um, they actually, I think it was at one stage said they wanted to offer him something, but it couldn't until he turned 16. So he was only like 15 or whatever at the stage. And then, um, yeah, like, that goalkeeping coach that actually got me the trial at United got him a trial at um, Leeds. So he this went goalie coach is the pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was goalie coach the pub. <laughs> I, I don't know. His son, his son plays professionally. Oh, um, um, what's his name? Kyle Leatherin? I don't know. Kyle Leatherin? He's our yeah. goalie coach? Yeah, that's what... He's my goalie yeah. coach. How weird is that? Yeah, so... Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah, his dad, um, his dad's Glenn. Yeah. So, um, I'll be yeah, messing he's... Kyle after. I might need him in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he had some good links, and then yeah, my brother ended up signing for Plymouth. Um, but again, he went on trial like into uh into Milan. Um, Your brother, cause we, yeah, because we went over, um, and did a a tour over there. It was it's it's a weird one because I never I never actually understood how it all happened, but my dad somehow had all these. Like he just Who the fuck is your dad? He talks a lot with people. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like he just he's he's just got good but relationships. What industry is your dad in? If you don't mind. Travel. Travel. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But he's like, he's obsessed with football. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's unbelievable. So, yeah, he's, um, we went on this like trip with a load of boys from Australia over to like uh, Italy. And it was just like a camp thing. We went yeah. training a few days. The coach just trained us. And then my brother got spotted from there for, into Miami for like a week's trial. Um, didn't get offered anything. But then, yeah, after that, he signed, came over here with Plymouth. And yeah. Funny enough. So, so going back to your career. Obviously, you've gone into Man United after being offered the two-year contract from Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah. Um, things didn't work out as, obviously, you wished at Man United. Where did you go from there? Um, so, after the Man United trial, 
signed my two year at Cardiff when I turned 16. Um, so the trial period before the United was me 15 again playing under 18s games, which again was another mental yeah. step. I was like, I've got to play up here. I've never, never really done that, especially 18 year olds. Like you're getting into men now. Um, so that was another step. And I, I did well in the first game. I was like, all right, I can do this now. So it got that, just built the confidence up. Um, then from there, signed when I was 16 at Cardiff on the two year scholar. Um, my parents wanted to move with me to Cardiff, about to put a deposit on a house. And then the FA in Wales went, no, you can't move. Um, some ruling from England to Wales, FA, oh. um, saying I can't move. So I had to go into digs in Cardiff. And I was, li- <laughs> I was living in the worst part of Cardiff um, in Grangetown. Sorry if I offend any yeah. people. I don't think we've got many um, fans here. Yeah. Many, many I've never audience. heard of <laughs> Greenstown, but it sounds, yeah. sounds rough. Yeah, so like, <laughs> and especially coming over to Australia, like I wasn't used to stabbings and like people's cars getting breaking into right outside my house. Um, like more so now living near London, but um, yeah, I was, wasn't was that comfortable there. Yeah. So moved home after about seven to eight months. Um, but it was, it was another good experience. Like When you say you left home, that means you left Cardiff? Yeah, so, so I left Cardiff and then um, moved, went on trial at a few different clubs after that. Is that a so, bittersweet moment then? Because obviously you've just got what you've came to England for, basically. Yeah. You've, you've come to try and pursue your dream of playing football. Got a, a really good club as well, giving you a two-year YT. And then you're having to leave, not based on your football and ability. Yeah, I remember, I remember sitting in the car when I was leaving on that day. I was just sitting in the, like, I just broke down to tears. I was sitting in the back and my dad's like you don't want to be a do and I just broke down to tears I was like nah like it's not because I was just I, there was so much stuff inside me that just it just built up over time and I just like over that six to eight months I was just like I don't like don't feel comfortable at all yeah. um although like Cardiff is a place it is a nice city like good food and stuff <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah, it's just like, I just remember sitting that day in the back of the car. My mum had just come uh, to watch my game. I was sitting on the bench on the Saturday, didn't get on. And then all that, just emotion just rushed in. Um, and then, yeah, ended up, ended up leaving. Like, even though you obviously your dream was to become a football and you had a great opportunity at Cardiff, your happiness is the most important thing. So yeah. you've obviously made the right decision moving on. Whether that's the right decision for football, it was the right decision for you. Mm. You have went then on trial at Boreham Wood and then you get to yeah, at so- Wood. I actually went on trial at a few different clubs. I went to on, on trial at Peterborough before. Um, they said they didn't didn't want me, didn't like me. Um, Luton as well. They actually really liked me at the start. Then played really well in the first half of the game against Loughborough Uni. Um, and then the second half I played shocking. Yeah. And yeah, obviously it's about that consistent performance. Um, How would so, you deal with all these setbacks? Um, on rejection? That is, it's a hard question. Um, I don't know. I think it's it's something in my brain where it's just like just gotta keep going. Yeah. Um, even a few months ago, I was thinking I've just like I've just left Bourne Wood, and that was on my own accord again, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, it was it was just me mentally just keeping just keeping taking the next step. It's like if if what when I'm thirty and I'm still going with football, maybe um, then if nothing's happened but i'm still 18 years old like i've got got a lot of time um so yeah but after after i um had those trials at peterborough luton um then found bournemouth my brother actually was, went on trial there <laughs> um so he had a three-day trial he messaged the manager he's like it was in pre-season so that pre-season he messaged the manager he's like i'll be the fittest player there yeah. and he, he said that to him he came in he's smashed out the fitness part, won every fitness test. Um, and he, he, he kind of is respect from there. And I think that kind of got me the, the link in. Um, but that season, I just played in the academy anyway. So that was last season. Played in the academy the entire season. Uh, got a few first team training sessions here and there. Um, and then I spoke to the manager at the end of last season. I was like, what's the chances of me coming in um, and kind of doing the entire preseason to show you what I'm about? and he followed, he actually halfway through last season, he followed me on my Instagram. So he saw, he like, he saw the work I was doing. Yeah. Like he'd be here and there. He'd be like, oh, that salmon you're cooking, looking like really yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, so he kind of respected that. And he's a younger manager as well. So I think he, 
like you could probably have managers that are older and they'd be like what are you doing on social media like you're just wasting your time and i think that's where it can play good for you but it can also can also play bad um so that's why sometimes when i'm in clubs i don't mention it when i like it's it's a thing i have to be wary of um but yeah i had that opportunity to go in pre-season we went down to devon in pre-season smashed it out i was the fittest player there um and that was all through me working hard in that off season to make sure i was the fittest because i didn't want to come in being behind in the fitness test and being a youngster and then me just being like another person there i wanted to make it and make a difference and um i was the only really youngster there out of everyone um well there's a keeper but he's been involved in it kind of the year before as well um but yeah i was the only youngster there and kind of proved my spot um and proved what i was about in preseason. with that um the negativity towards like social media and all that um we were playing for doncaster town and john bostock um he plays for Notts county now He's had an unbelievable career. He was supposed to be like the a millionaire kid when he was younger. I think he went on to like. Was well, Bar- he one of the youngest? Yeah, I think he played for Tottenham. And um, he went to like Barcelona or Real Madrid or he wants them or something like that. And um, he was out of contract and he was basically documenting his journey back and recording himself training, trying to get a club in preseason. He then signed for Doncaster, and um, we were losing at the time, but he was bringing his GoPro into the changing rooms and uh. like was recording them record himself and I can remember one game we got beat like 3-0 or something like that <laughs> come in the changes after the game and one of our players I won't name him one of our players just come for him hammered him saying you fucking recording yourself in the change rooms and all that like going going mad at him but like it had no like nothing there was no relevance no relevance yeah. on like the his performance on the pitch and all that but you're just yeah. setting like a little target on your back basically for 100% yeah like, do, you 100%. Feel, do you feel that as well while you're, while no, you're definitely I, like, I get people now it pro- I'd say probably every game I play now like I went down near Southampton I was training down there the other other week and like, I get every like people know who I am now mm. and it's like even when I'm playing against people they'll, they'll either like be good and like say like, oh, like I love your stuff like after the game they'll be like shake my hand and then they'll be like oh like, I've seen your stuff on social media like, I really like it keep going with it um but yeah, you get the odd one here and there that are like, <laughs> I remember playing against Yeovil um, this season for the, for the or last season for the under 19s. Um, and like, I, I crossed the ball with, my, it was with my right foot. So I'm left foot, I crossed the ball with my right foot. It's gone out behind the goal. And I was like, and then they were all like, oh, go put that on your Instagram. Go <laughs> put that on YouTube. No, yeah. I'm just there. To be fair, that doesn't, like, it you doesn't affect me. Yeah, it doesn't, aff- like, it doesn't, that doesn't affect me, but it's just, like, it's just a funny one. Um, But even the, the lads at Bourne Woods, to be fair, I remember we went up to um, some, like, three, eight, four hour journey and I was sitting on the bus on the way back. Um, and I didn't get on or anything. I was just sitting on the bench. Um, And I remember them saying and speaking to me, they're like, you should be documenting this because I didn't feel comfortable filming on the bus like it's my first yeah. first time really with a professional club first team as well um and i didn't feel comfortable promoting me being a part of this team and i'm sitting on the bench like do you think that's an age thing because obviously and also like maybe you haven't earned your stripes in football but i can't imagine many people saying something to ben foster when he was fucking maybe letting goals in and he had that cam- camera behind the goal I uh, reckon they would have. Do you reckon? Yeah. Oh, I don't reckon they are. I reckon they would have. Also, in, by the in, way, if he let them imp- if it, if he let that impact them, he wouldn't be where he is. No, with, I know. Yeah. What he in wants. the team or in against um, opposition players? The, yeah, you'd get some little idiot who yeah, probably opposition. say something just for banter, yeah. but like realistically, it's his, it, it's yeah. not your career, but it's it's a career, yeah. which is also not kind of something which doesn't happen but often. But it nowadays. also does come was with that age. John Bostock one years ago? No, it was only, well a couple of years ago. You still obviously made his name in a game and all that. So yeah, but also content is like it's quite relevant now yeah but would it? ben foster have done what he was doing when he was like, yeah in the man end of his when no he was not and you know probably not or yeah. even like, like Watford when he was like 24 25 obviously he starts doing it later on in his career when he was coming towards the end of his career that's also when the content, content future kind of grown as well though content wasn't really yeah. a thing when he was and maybe he would, would or wouldn't so i don't know but but then there's no one know. doing it now i have seen a like there's been an influx now like yeah. i've seen a lot of younger people like young scholars like um, uh, like a few from um M- like milton Keynes, um crystal palace like seen a few do it like one, there's one lad um his name's jaden or something from crystal palace that doesn't he puts like the gopro on yeah. in his training session i'm like i couldn't do that yeah. but uh, because i like i'm not not putting a gopro on in my training i think sessions. it has to come with like confidence and just be like you you're gonna have to understand and 
take on that, you're probably going to get shit. If you you probably will, yeah. yeah. It's and not fair, though, is it really? Because it's like, no, it's for not example, fair, no. it's you, not you know, fair. it's hard because obviously you need football to be able to do what you're doing with the content. But at the same time, there's probably people within the dressing room who are doing stuff with other businesses, yeah. which are never under the spotlight. Yeah, you know like, so, yeah, yeah, I remember at Bournemouth, like, there's a few lads um, that were doing like this kind of stuff, like um, podcasts or like little shows here and there. Um, but even me, I was like, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've got a thing with Player Maker where it's like it tracks your, yeah. your boot stats. And I remember putting those on in a training session once at Bournemouth. And a few of the lads like, what, what the hell? Like, what are you doing wearing yeah. those? And like, if I was a if I was a youngster wearing those, I'd be like, I'd be told to get off the pitch. Oh, you know what though? That's just the mentality. Of football, it, though, yeah, it? like it's just it's I, and I was just like, whatever. I, I was just like, it's, yeah. it's good for me. I'll get also, get, yeah, get also, photos for it. Yeah, exactly. What that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you get told to get off the pitch, but he's getting paid to do it. Yeah. So yeah, how how much? Who's a fool here? Yeah, no, no, yeah. You know I mean? it's a uh, people just want to just give you shit, don't they? I, if I mean, anything that doesn't break the mold of football, yeah. you kind of conform to what everyone else is doing, really? and you stick within those lines. And then yeah. if it's anything different. You, you're open to like a bit of stick yeah. which is strange to me but well I'm, I I take it I get messages because I'm starting doing this podcast now I got one saying um, just concentrate on your football stop talking shit it's on your podcast yeah. <laughs> is that a fan or a player yeah just a fan yeah obviously not a player no yeah, yeah. Just a fan, yeah. Just yeah. Like, obviously he just must have been having a bad day at work yeah. or something someone must have given him a bit of shit at work and he just wants to take it out on me but it's what it is isn't it yeah sometimes I message him back even like hate ones whether it's like um <laughs> if my food's bad or whatever yeah. and they don't like the meal um on my instagram like i'll just be like um what's the point in messaging me that like I, sometimes i respond some, a lot of the time you I ever don't, seen but... that um, pc james smith you know him? yeah, yeah. You know him? yeah. Uh, he's he's a pc but he's he's very open about yeah. anything like he's fucking funny but he's very smart as well and yeah. like when people troll him he just goes in on them yeah. properly like with probably the person who's receiving it's like uh, shouldn't have done that. Probably shouldn't have said that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you need to be held accountable, don't they? Yeah. Some of the stuff, as you say, what like you've gone through a three-year injury, like this is to help you. This yeah. isn't like, you know what I mean? It's not you're not making thousands of pounds from yeah. it or anything like this. Is to help you and also to help other people. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then you've got some idiots sat in this thing going concentrate on football. Yeah. Well, I'd like to do that, but I've been injured for three years, yeah, yeah. so this is my kind of way to to get a bit of to feel better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I don't know. It's strange, isn't it? People yeah. are open to opinions, like yeah. See, I go more on like the nice route. I'm like, do you need someone to talk to? Like, no one's out there yeah. going, just putting negative about negativity about if they're not like mentally right. And I'm, I'm, I go on that nicer side because I saw some. I think it was Gary V or someone said that. Like he, he does that sometimes. And he messages them back. I was like, oh, that's good. Like I'll take that. And yeah, I have done it a few times, but they just don't respond. Yeah. They read it and they just don't respond. And then I'm like, oh. this podcast is sponsored by Blive House, financial advisors for high net worth individuals and business owners. If you're looking for advice in pensions, investments, mortgages, inheritance, tax planning, life cover, business loans, and asset finance, then Blythe House has the expertise for you. Head over to the show notes on whatever platform you're listening to this on to find out more. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like and follow the page. Thank you. You know, you started documenting, um, obviously, your journey a couple of years ago. Um, when you started doing it, did you think or imagine like how big you've grown your following now? Definitely not this quickly. I, I definitely think with my mindset, I feel like I, could, like I can achieve anything I want to. Um, and I think that's such a good thing about my mindset is anything I really want, I feel like I can work towards whether it takes years um, or months. Like I have that kind of long-term vision for it, not like I want it instantly. Um, and I definitely thought I could grow something out of it, um, whether it, I didn't know it was a business or or how quickly it's grown to um, like 300k over like all kind of platforms at the moment um but yeah i did kind of know i could create something um but it has grown very quickly just for people that don't know them what do you actually do what what content do you put out there so um on my instagram i've just kind of separated the two accounts but what i was doing on my prof the professional diary instagram and tiktok youtube was documenting my football so i would do day in the lives um and all my training and the food i was eating and then that kind of sprouted the the food content. So me posting healthy cooking recipes um, for people to not only use themselves, but me just making the food anyway. So I'm just like, why don't I film this and post it to see if other people like it? Um, so I started posting that, got some like really people saying like, these recipes really help me. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of split those two Instagrams now. So one's going to be more um, football specific and then one's going to be more food specific just so 
they can kind of get two audience. If you don't want the football, then you can just have the food. And if you don't want the food, you can just have the football. Um, so, and if you want both, go follow yeah. both. But um, yeah, that's that's quite what I had for the vision for it. And which one do you, are you leaning towards more that you, you love doing more? Um, for creating, I love the, the food side, but obviously the football is first for me and um, the football career is something that's my main passion and my main purpose. But yeah, the food for me has always been something I, I've loved doing. And um, even that like, I went to a, got invited to go by Virgin Experience Days uh, to go to some like Gordon Ramsay cooking class. And I, I absolutely loved it. Like, I was just obsessed with it that day. And um, yeah, I don't know. don't know what it was. Maybe it was that like weight loss journey that inspired me into the food. Um, but yeah. I think it's important though. You are documenting this journey because, when you're playing football, like as a youngster, there's always that probably want to play football as a professional. You know what I mean? But I think you're given a little bit of an insight to the hard work it takes to get there. Yeah. But equally, as the Boreham Wood players said, you know, document the stuff where it's not going well mm. because you only had a glimpse into professional football, adult football, and you've already seen that it's not just like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Probably it's fucking definitely not yeah. like that. Well, no, it's not. Yeah, exactly. 90% of the time it's not like that. Yeah. But I like, think that's important to be documented too because you can share your journey, your, you know, your knockbacks that you're having at the moment, the resilience that you've got to keep going. That's, that's commendable. But so you, I think it should be documented as well. Some of the stuff that people don't see as well. Do you know what I mean? Like outside mm-hmm. of looking in, you go to footy, you play, you go home at one o'clock, you might do, but... You, you might have had a discussion with the manager who said, you know, my plans. Obviously, you can't document that. Do you know yeah, me? yeah, but it's a hard you can, one. Yeah. You can kind of come back out of it and, and, and speak about how it, how it went and how you're feeling and stuff like that because there's, football's just an emotional roller coaster, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I remember like the boys on, like, on that bus ride, they were saying, like, you should be documenting, like, you carrying the water, <laughs> like, you carrying the water bottles and yeah. stuff like that and the ball bags. And like, I was like, yeah, I should. Like, I should show that side because like no one really does. Um, and I am kind of trying to, on my YouTube, I'm starting it back up. Like I did stop for a period um, just because it was too much work. Like I was doing so many different things. Um, but I am starting it back up where I'm being more open and honest about my football journey because I think it was a bit like, I'm here going on trial here. I'm going preseason. I'm playing, making my professional debut. Like It was that kind of just upwards curve. Although you obviously saw... Leading up to that, I was like out of clubs. I was playing like step five. Then I was playing with no one, went on trial, didn't get selected. So I did document the whole Peterborough trial, like those kind of things, um, which you can go back on, look on. And that that for me is something cool as well. Like later on in life, I'll be able to see that and yeah. see what I did. Um, so that, I think that that is quite a cool thing as well. How did you feel when you made your professional debut? Uh, it's a surreal moment. Like I remember um, at the time I was just, driving home and I just couldn't stop smiling like um especially like we lost as well which was the annoying part but um yeah it was just it was a surreal experience like just being that kid from Australia coming over and that always being in my mind to make my professional debut play professionally and I just achieved that um and it's not me saying I'm stopping now because I'm definitely not um because I've achieved it but it's always something um every kid dreams of dreams of doing it. I think a lot of my followers dream of doing that and that's why they're, they're following me because they want to follow along that journey um so yeah it's it's an amazing experience so do you feel like you're given some lessons with the social media side then to a lot of your, your audience or from obviously as you say it's been a bit of an upward curve but now also giving them the insights to, to how it's actually going and the ups and downs do you feel like people are kind of getting a bit of I don't know uh you're helping them a little bit yeah, 100%. I think not only for kids younger than me, I think people my age or even slightly older, um, showing them that even in the football in England, like whether it's, like it's the best place in the world to be for football, sometimes you might be out in non-league, you have to go get a second job and um, then you're also going into training in the evening and then you have to work in t- through the entire day, go training and then still remain positive and still remain that mentality, you can still make it. Um, but I think those lessons, as you said, like, just the things where show the work ethic throughout, whether it's my short 30 second day in the life on Instagram or the long ones on YouTube to show how much I'm actually doing to try and make it, whether it's not just like I'm going to do one training session or, or five training sessions a week. It's a lot of work going into it 
um, and it's not just something that comes easy. And I think um, to show the real work ethic and the real thing you have to put into it to get something out of it for the younger generation, because um, I think everyone wants something now. Yeah. Like the younger, like my generation, even below, want it all to come quickly. They want to be in the professional academy. Like I get loads of messages saying like, do I have to be in a professional academy? Do I have to be in this academy? Can I still make it after? I'm getting kids messaging me saying, can I still make it after six, the age of 16? I'm like, 16, you, like, yeah. it's, it's just a scholar. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think just all those lessons they can take away and learn is something very vital. I think for, 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 his, for yourself as well, Liam, when you're being 18, a lot of 18 year olds are getting five sessions a week. You know what I mean? If they're in the academies or whatever, yeah. five sessions a week, they've probably got a gym program as well. So you're playing catch up at the moment now. Obviously mm. you're in non-league. As you say, sometimes you have to you have to get a second job as well to just to support you, yourself. Obviously you become an adult, you need to be able to earn money as well. Um, so you are playing catch up, but that's a testament to the amount of work that you're putting in. You've got like a real structure. Can you tell mm. us a little bit about the structure? Obviously it, it includes your nutrition, but you know, you've got a gym program as well, haven't you? And yeah, yeah. So um, with the whole schedule of my training, it obviously it does change on a kind of week to week or day to day basis. But at the moment, it's like me pretty much training every day or train as much as I possibly can without overtraining. Um, so like on a Monday, I'll go train with this like agency. So like football agency put together like non-league boys, like step three, step two, that don't train on a Monday uh We'll obviously have Wednesday off, but Monday and Friday. Um, so you just train on Tuesday and Thursday and non-league. So we all come together on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you're doing sessions with that group to then have five sessions a week and then you can play your game on a Saturday. So that's what I've been doing the past like four or five weeks. Um, so I'm getting those those sessions in, which is good. But even still, when I'm not with that group and before and year, like one, two years ago, I'd be out training by myself. I'd be out. Like yesterday morning, I was out at 5.45, it was pitch black. Um, like I'm there because I need to work in the day, but I also need to get my training session in. The training session comes first because that's the most important thing. That's my, my priority. So I need to get my sessions in. So whether it's me making time, I need to get up early to train or um, doing, the, doing the stuff around it is something I've always been doing, whether it's with my brother as well, whether we're training together or I go out and do it myself, it's, always been that forefront of it. Do you ever have thoughts of giving up? Because obviously the amount of work that you put in, the work ethic, work ethic you got, like getting up at 5 to go and do a training session, you're putting all the work and you're not getting rewarded. Do you ever have like negative thoughts coming to your head? 100%. Um, I was thinking it like a few weeks, months ago, um, and I messaged my mate in Australia. Um, his name's Andy, and I was like, like, what am I doing here? I'm just, like, I'm putting all these hours in. And I've got no success. I've got no pro contract out of it. I'm 18. Like and he's like, exactly. You're 18. Like there's still kids in Liverpool because he sports Liverpool as so well. He's like, yep. there's still kids in Liverpool academies. Like in the 23s, they haven't played a minute of professional football. They're just playing academy football. Like you've played professionally. You've seen it. So what are you saying? You want to give up now? And I think as well the social media side having that. It's something important because it, it's also an accountability thing. Yeah. Like if I'm giving up, then I'm showing all these other kids they can give up as well. Mm. Um, so I think for me as well, having that, it just keeps me going, and um, showing showing the kids I can well, still make it. In a couple of years time, you could look back at it all and just think like, that is exactly why I didn't give up because mm. other lads in your age um, would definitely give up by now. So like you are a kid to yourself and you are making yourself accountable, which mm. is important. But you are doing this to help other people out. So you'd be like lying if you was giving up and then telling someone else to do it. So you have to keep yourself accountable. Why yeah. he sends me those pictures. Have you seen the guy when he's knocking away at the wall? Yeah. And then there's two guys knocking away at, at the at the dirt at the wall. Oh yeah, and the mining thing. The, yeah. yeah, the mining thing, yeah. And then one turns back and then one just keeps knocking and then there's like, I forgot, I think it's diamonds or something yeah. like that. But yeah, yeah, you, you could be that close to... to something changing very quickly for you. That's how football is, isn't it? Yeah. You can go either way really quickly. 100%. And I think I saw that as well when I, when I had that opportunity. I was at Cardiff, whether it's the Cardiff one or the Man United or even the Bourne Wood one. Like, I didn't think after the preseason, well, I didn't think, I'm, I thought I was sitting on the bench here for the entire season. First four games, I didn't get on, just sitting on the bench. And even though it was a game against Oxford City, I was, I remember um, I was sitting on the bench. There was only, it was me and Timmy Abraham on the bench. So Tammy's brother. Yeah. and um. I was sitting there and he's come on. There's no other players on the bench. We're losing 4-0. 
and there's only been one sub made and the gaffer didn't want to put me on. And I'm sitting there like, if he's not put me on this game, we're losing 4-0 and he's not put me on. I'm not coming off for the rest of the yeah. season. Then I, I was like, all right, what's happening here? Went on trial at QPR actually. Um, in between that whole series, he allowed me to go on, got called back in like a week because he wanted me on for the game or he wanted me for the game on the Saturday. And then I made my debut. On so that Saturday? Yeah, on the Saturday. After going to QPR? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, so like he's called me back and, um, well, to be fair, he called me back and then I was on the Oxford one. And then, yeah, the game after I was, I made my debut. But yeah, it's um, it's a, a weird, weird journey the way it all works. But it, it happens, isn't it? Nothing worth fighting for as ever easy as No, no, definitely agree. I wonder yeah. if that QPR thing sparked a little thing in the manager's mind to we might be able to get some. <laughs> I think it know. might have to be yeah, fair. We might be able to get always... some money for me or something like that. Yeah, um, and I think that's what the the good thing with me. I didn't want to sign kind of a pro. I did, but I didn't like if a big club did come in like QPR because basically I got the opportunity at QPR to go on a uh, 14 day trial and the manager kind of kept pulling me in and out so it kind of we never ever done the 14 days it, it messed up the trial a bit but uh, like and I'm, I'm not saying anything it's the manager's fault or whatever i'm just saying like um i never got a straight straight shot at it i was supposed to be a game on the so we played oxford city on the monday there was supposed to be a game for qpr on the tuesday for the uh like their b team um and i was supposed to be involved in the training on the monday but i obviously couldn't go to the training on the monday I had to go to the game so I missed out on that game completely went back to QPR on the Thursday and then um, went back home had to go into Bournemouth on the Friday to go training for the game on Saturday where I made my debut but the manager phoned me up he's like what's happening like, on the Thursday he's like, he's like what's happening with the QPR I was like I've been here for six seven days like um, there's not much I haven't played a game or anything yeah. Um, and he's like, all right, I'll phone them up, see what's happening and speak to them. And then, yeah, the QPR trial ended and then I was back. But you said before about um, you trained at 5.45 because of you having, to, having work commitments throughout the day. Um, that's obviously something that when you're playing part-time football, you have to take into account. Uh, what, what work commitments do you have at the moment that are kind of allowing you to, to go and do these trials? Uh, obviously, you're committing a lot of time to... to the goal of obviously be ultimately playing professional football but equally you're, you're 18 now as well so it gets to that point where you need to start in and a little bit of money for yourself as well so what, what what jobs are you doing at the moment um so at the moment it's kind of like my my own business whether like with the social media um i'm doing a few different things off the side of that so you've got the content creation and the brand partnerships and those kind of things um i'm then also doing like a, another business off the side uh which i can't really talk about but um i do freelance work as well which is just me um, helping people like edit their their videos for social media as well. You know, I've heard yeah. it on a few podcasts and all that. So do you get paid from social media? Because obviously you've got big, big followings. How does that work? Yeah. So um, it'll just be off of like brand basis. So whether it's a brand campaign or, or I'm commission on a product. Um, but to be honest, for me, it's, I don't promote so many brands because like you, you have to believe in those. Yeah, yourself, I, yeah. I can't. Like I, could, I get a lot of emails yeah. and a lot of DMs of brands wanting me to promote for them. Um, but I don't want to promote, like I did a Joseph Joseph one, which was a cooking one, but I actually love their products. Like I, st- I don't even, like I'm not working with them on a brand campaign right now, but I use it myself and it's something I would use. So um, a lot of the brands, I'm just not just going to free promotion, yeah. but um, yeah, a lot of the brands that I do work with, are what brands I do. Because you get PR teams reaching out to you off the yeah. basis of your videos, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, to be fair, one of the coolest ones was Player Maker, um, which, like, they took me out to, like, the city training ground um, a few weeks ago, or end of last year. And like, I went, did a full training session at the city training ground. And then after that, um, like, we filmed it all for content and stuff. And then after that, I went to, like, the City versus Liverpool game yeah. at um, the city ground. It was, like, like that was... That was a pretty sick experience. What kind like, of data can you get from from those types of uh, products? Um, so with the the player maker one, you get like all your agility, your distance, um, power, like your shot power, like how many times you touch the ball with your left, your right foot. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's quite a good product, and I actually really like it to be honest. Because especially when you're not in a full time club, you don't have your yeah, GPS, stats, yeah. GPSs, and those kind of things with the club tracking your data. You have to do it yourself. 
So I've used the GPSs before, but look, they're only tracking my running. They're not tracking my football ability yeah. as well. So I thought, why not get the best of both worlds and use both? Yeah. Um, although it does look sometimes a little bit weird, it being on your boots and you do get the. It's not that invasive, no, is it? It's not that invasive. There's, it's only small. It's it's no, effective. it's not. And they've just actually got the the FIFA thing where it's like um, you can use it in game, like yeah. profes- professional game. If people in the pool win, and everyone will think that they're on tug. They, you know, they use it <laughs> in training. No, I don't mean the Liverpool players. Just being like people <laughs> oh, around Liverpool. Oh, okay. uh, so once you've got that data from that session, is the aim to then get more touches for the next session or what? yeah so whether it's like i'm low on touch to my right foot because obviously i'm left then it'll be like i need to work on my right or like um turns off my right and left foot like make sure i'm not weak on one side or all those kinds of things or even if it's like my work rate throughout the session i thought i worked hard but i'm only doing like three kilometers where i should be doing five or six in the training session um then yeah it's kind of those stats how would you describe yourself as a footballer um Definitely technically, like, I've always had that technical ability, like passing, I can hit hit like a great pass. And I think a lot of the managers I've played for, or the, a lot of players, they've seen me play, like, technically, they know I'm great. I think um, my work rate as well is another thing. Like, uh, I've shown a lot of people the difference I can, I can change, like, how hard I can work, and then um, how where I can go from one stage to the next, yep. like even throughout this preseason to where I was at the end of leaving Bournemouth, like the manager saw me, the improvements I made and how hard I worked to, to get those improvements. So I think a work rate and then my technical ability is, is something that speaks oh, for themselves. What position do you play? Left back and like left centre back. And what footballer do you, do you look up to? Or? Um, I mean, it's always been kind of Andy Robertson because I was... Liverpool um, yeah, Liverpool. Um, <laughs> He's shaking his head. He's shaking because he's having fun. <laughs> um, but like my management, like when I had a an agent, um, like he was saying, I, I like got the play style like a Kieran Tierney. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know about that. I one. mean, he's not a bad player. Too, yeah, he's not bad. Yeah, work rate. Yeah, yeah. Work rate. Probably, probably the right down left foot. Yeah, up and down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's good. That's a good. Like, that's the modern day left back, isn't it? Yeah. What's uh, what's 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 the next then for for your journey in terms of professional football? Um. So I have been like I've got offer from Australia. I've had I've had that offer um, as we spoke about. So I'm seeing what happens there with that. Seeing if I can get anything in writing, maybe go over there. Um, but if I if I stay here, it'll be obviously most probably non non league step three, step two. I don't really want to go too much lower than that. Um, and just building up my game time, really men's football experience. So I'm only still younger, and if a trial does come about with like a 21s like you went eight night like if a trial does come about then i'll take that and i'll, I'll absolutely just destroy it like i'll do my best yeah. i possibly can um to get that chance what would you prefer then because obviously you are 18 and a lot of players don't mature until a lot later than that mm. but it's it, it might be a tough ask to go into especially that low down the men's game and put a real footprint on the on on the on the game and also you know, get the manager to, to put that trust into play here week in, week out. So for your development, are you looking towards men's football or are you looking towards getting into an academy and still trying to learn your game? It's such a hard one because I've grown up playing football and then you go into English non-league and it's just a complete different game. It's like, like I do, I don't feel like, I feel a lot better if I was in the academy playing football. I feel like I could just smash it. Whereas, it's a, you've got to completely adapt when you play non-league and then you go on a trial at QPR. <laughs> like, you, you're, you're from one, one side, you're going from playing long and doing channel balls all the time yeah. for the winger to run onto or the striker to then playing into the midfielder's feet to pop it out to then go out the other side. So it's, for me, it's that, that football one where you're, you're actually playing football. I, I just hate the long ball, long ball stuff. So I think it would be, if I preferred and I had the opportunity, it would be, Go on a trial at like a League Two, League One, Champ, whatever club, get into the twenty ones there. Although it's not it's not great when you're playing twenty ones and you're just playing against other twenty one sides. It's not a great building your CV or whatever. It's better for me because I'd be able to then work. I know I'd be able to work myself into that first team, and I know I'd be able to prove myself to the manager and those kind of things. And you know, with all the setbacks that you've had and the rejection. Have you ever had the thought of going to play for like one of the influence and football teams? Because obviously you've got a massive following yourself. I actually, I actually haven't, you know, it's good. It's a good, 
it is definitely a good. Uh, that was a great question. Actually. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely a good question. <laughs> there's some good. It just comes to me. There's some good players. In no, that's what I'm team. saying. Well, yeah. Some other I played with Greg Halford played the Premier League and all that. He plays with that hashtag, I think. Yeah, because yeah. I know there's another um, influence. I think his name's Kieran Higgs or someone, um, and I think he went there. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd do that because I, it's not. I don't know. You it's not your goal, is it? Your goal is to become a professional. Yeah, I would not. It's because they're like step three, though, aren't they? I, don't I know. think they're like step three, step four, whatever it is. So maybe, um, but yeah, I've, like, I've been reaching out to clubs like overseas. Like I'd be happy to go overseas and yeah. play, um, preferably in like Europe. But um, I just but think yeah. with the, obviously the following you've got and like the influence that you've, you're doing at the minute and you are helping other people, like the satisfaction that you could get from that as well. Mm. Um, sometimes there might be a time where you think, you know, it's not working out in, in my football career, but I've learned loads of lessons that I can help. Um, with other people trying to become a footballer and then focus on that because obviously you, your following is huge. Mm. Yeah, I, it's, it's definitely a tough one because I don't want to, like, I don't like promoting something yeah. that um, that I haven't done myself or um, like me saying, go do these um, workouts to be a pro footballer. Like, yeah. I've not played 50, 100 games of pro football. You know what I mean? So. I've just like I played one game of pro football. I know who I am, and I want to promote exactly that. And I want to show you what I've done. Here's what I've done. You can read it, you can see it, and you can follow it, or you can just not follow. Like yeah. there it is. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm quite open and honest with what I've achieved, what I'm doing. Um, and maybe maybe I'll go maybe I'll go play for one of those teams. But like even even with the social media, it's like I could go. Um, and I think that's what a lot of clubs are opening up to now is the social media. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I could, I've been reaching out to clubs overseas and I was like, look, here's my social media. I yeah. can promote you and play for you. And it's like, you get the benefit of revenue with sales of people getting to know the club and getting a bigger following of social media. Plus I'm getting the benefit of playing football. It's essentially what, I mean, it's obviously a much smaller scale, but it's essentially ben what Fos Messi, you know, yeah. Ben Foster yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But also the likes of Messi signing for, for the club in, in America. That's, yeah, that's, I wouldn't that, say on that. No, though. no, yeah. I'll, I'll say that's a <laughs> yeah. much yeah. smaller level. Yeah. It's it's to bring revenue to the com to the to the club, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. obviously yeah. he's the greatest yeah. ever, but like it's also to bring revenue to yeah. that club, which it did. Yeah, yeah. which it yeah. did. So it's it's a good pitch to be fair. Yeah, I think like the Ben Foster one as well. That obviously Ryan Reynolds saw that, and he's like, we got to get him in. Yeah, we're both. Yeah, yeah. They like he's just completely blown up Wrexham with the not only Ryan Reynolds coming in, but Ben Foster as well with that whole social media yeah. side coming in. It just blew up. So everyone like together stronger, isn't it? Yeah. Like as you say, them social media teams, obviously the more more that you've got who are in the similar field to you, you can only grow together collectively and be a bit stronger, I guess. Mm, hundred percent. But what's yeah. what's the so obviously you've had this offer from Australia and you're open to that. It's obviously a place that you've lived. So you you're fam you're not familiar with that area as such, but you're familiar with the country. Yeah. Uh, you know the lifestyle and stuff like that. But you know, should you take that offer? Is your goal still to get back to England to play football? Yeah, it's like, obviously it's the place to be for football. So um, I do want to play here. I want to be here playing football. So whether it's I take that offer and I work my way and get noticed by A-League clubs and then somehow work my way back. But even playing Australia, we were talking about it, playing Australia in A-League, it's still like, it's A-League's a good level there. Like it's, I'd probably say it's like National League here, uh, maybe even... Probably higher now. Yeah, maybe yeah. even League 2. Um, so that's probably like that, like that's the standard I would, I don't, yeah. like I want to play at. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I could play like watching players that are playing that, like being at Bournemouth and seeing the standard. I feel like I could play in that. So, um, yeah, it's just about getting the opportunity at the moment. Really, um, you guys know it's not, it's not easy getting opportunities. No. Um, especially when you're out of a club and you've been out for a while and they look at your CV and they're like, "What is it?" But uh, if I get the opportunity, I'll show them what I'm about. Really. Yeah. You're doing a lot of traveling. You're doing a lot of traveling to, to obviously achieve this goal. So was his family. Family doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. a big commitment from you all. But obviously, shows just how determined you are to, to the end goal. Um, which is which is you know it's a credit to you all to be honest with you. Um, for anyone who's watching this podcast, if we get if they're gonna click that follow button for yourself, would it be for food, football, or what? What's the pages for both? So, um. On Instagram for the football one, it's the professional diary. The Instagram for the food one is the professional food. Um, and then TikTok, the professional diary. And then 
professional food diary on TikTok. Mm. And then if they want to follow my YouTube, it's just the professional diary. I'm going to get my wife to follow your food, please, because our, <laughs> our food at the minute is lacking. We need some, <laughs> need some she can't see that. Yeah, she needs, <laughs> You'll have to cut that out. She's getting kicked out. He's, he's on here to get kicked out every week. Yeah. You know? uh, she needs to sort that out. <laughs> Slacker, mate. He's getting the clickbait title. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Yeah, I'm saying where can our audience follow him, but it, we're, we're looking for his audience, to be honest. Obviously, no. we have a lot of footballers who have been in your, in your, in, in the place that you want to be. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, they can relate to the story of obviously the ups and downs. So no, I think, thank you very much for coming down and, uh, you know, sharing snippets of it. And then obviously if anyone wants to go and delve a little bit deeper, they can go to your social media pages currently to find out more. hundred percent. I appreciate you guys inviting me on. I think what you guys doing here, like showing the other side of other side of football is something very, um, inspiring that a lot of people need to watch and they need to see that side of it so no i appreciate you guys inviting me on thank you thank you very much mate cheers